Good morning class. Today, we will delve into the fascinating world of cardiology and explore various topics related to atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease. We will gain a thorough understanding of the underlying mechanisms and risk factors associated with the development of these conditions. Moreover, we will also analyze the pathophysiology of plaque rupture and thrombus formation, leading to acute coronary syndrome. The risk factors associated with the development of atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease are multifactorial. They include modifiable factors such as smoking, hypertension, dyslipidemia, obesity, diabetes mellitus, and sedentary lifestyle. Non-modifiable factors include age, gender, and family history of premature cardiovascular disease. Understanding these risk factors and their interplay with the underlying pathophysiology is crucial for effective prevention and management strategies. The pathophysiology underlying plaque rupture and thrombus formation is intricate and involves the interaction between various cellular and molecular players. Local inflammatory processes, endothelial dysfunction, and structural changes in the arterial wall contribute to the vulnerability of plaques. Understanding the complex mechanisms involved in these processes is crucial for designing targeted therapeutic interventions and preventive strategies. Coronary angiography, the gold standard for diagnosing and visualizing coronary artery disease, allows for the identification of stenotic lesions and the evaluation of the coronary circulation. This invasive procedure involves the injection of a contrast agent into the coronary arteries, which helps identify areas of significant narrowing or complete occlusion. The information obtained from coronary angiography guides subsequent therapeutic decisions, including the need for revascularization procedures such as percutaneous coronary intervention PCI, or coronary artery bypass grafting CABG. The initial management of unstable angina and STEMI involves a combination of medications to reduce platelet aggregation and control risk factors. Interventional procedures like PCI or CAB may be considered for high-risk patients or those with refractory symptoms. The specific approach depends on each patient's unique characteristics and clinical condition. Glycoprotein IIB slash FIA inhibitors may be used in high-risk ACS patients to prevent platelet aggregation. Duration of dual antiplatelet therapy depends on clinical factors, comorbidities, and stent type. Newer agents and strategies are being studied to improve treatment approaches. Invasive management involves angiography with revascularization and has potential risks. Conservative management focuses on medical therapy for symptom relief, risk factor modification, and monitoring. The decision between the two should be personalized, considering patient characteristics, preferences, and available resources. Collaboration between specialists is crucial. The video discusses treatment options for ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, STEMI. Thrombolytic therapy and primary PCI are explained, emphasizing the importance of timely reperfusion and the establishment of regional systems of care for STEMI patients. Acute coronary syndrome can lead to complications such as arrhythmias, which can be caused by various factors. Prompt intervention, including medications or electrical cardioversion, may be required. Cardiogenic shock, characterized by low blood pressure and poor organ perfusion, requires aggressive management with fluids, medications, and mechanical support. Careful monitoring and timely intervention are essential in managing these complications. In the section on risk stratification models and scoring systems in acute coronary syndrome ACS, two commonly used tools are the Global Registry of Acute Coronary Events GRACE, Risk Score and the Thrombolysis in Myocardial Infarction TIMI, Risk Score. These validated scoring systems help clinicians classify patients into low, intermediate, and high-risk categories, aiding in treatment decisions such as antiplatelet therapy intensity, invasive procedures, and early follow-up. This personalized approach allows for better resource allocation and appropriate interventions based on individual risk levels. Traditionally, DAP durations of 12 months were recommended following the placement of drug-eluting stents and shorter durations following the insertion of bare metal stents. However, recent studies have challenged these recommendations by suggesting that shorter DAP durations of 3 to 6 months, combined with potent P2Y12 inhibitors, are equally effective and may minimize bleeding complications. The decision regarding DAP duration should consider various factors, including the inherent risk of the patient, the type of stent used, the presence of comorbidities, and the risk of bleeding. A balanced approach, weighing the risks of recurrent ischemic events versus bleeding complications, is crucial in determining the optimal duration for each patient. Procedures such as enhanced thrombus aspiration, bioresorbable scaffolds, or drug-eluting balloons are also being investigated to improve coronary revascularization techniques and minimize long-term complications. Furthermore, advances in imaging modalities, including intravascular ultrasound and optical coherence tomography, allow for a more detailed assessment of coronary anatomy and plaque characteristics, 
aiding in precise treatment planning. The future of acute coronary syndrome management holds great promise, with potential breakthroughs that may revolutionize the way we diagnose, risk stratify, and treat patients. Ongoing clinical trials and collaborative research efforts worldwide offer hope for continued advancements and improvement in patient outcomes. Lifestyle changes like quitting smoking, eating a healthy diet, exercising regularly, managing stress, and maintaining a healthy weight can reduce the risk of future heart events in patients with acute coronary syndrome. Taking prescribed medications and participating in cardiac rehabilitation programs is also important. In conclusion, understanding risk factors, personalizing treatment, and promoting healthy habits can improve outcomes in acute coronary syndrome. Stay informed for optimal patient care. Thank you, and let's continue exploring cardiology together.